When the group first arrived here, they would have had a selection of African lions. A group of 250 people may have had at least five or six different lions. But over a thousand years, if this population stayed isolated, gradually those lines would have reduced and reduced. The total number of the population would have stayed the same. It's rather like a Welsh village, hill village, or, or, or a village in, in Italy, where after a number of generations, everybody gets to have the same surname. This process of reduction of lines is called drift, and it happens in all small isolated communities. The smaller and more isolated a group is, the faster the mitochondrial DNA line comes down to one. Not to one person, or even to one group, but one mitochondrial DNA line. Some women have no daughters. Some daughters don't survive. So in the end, only one line is left. Totally isolated, they could breed only amongst themselves. The genetic map shows it would take about a thousand years for the mitochondrial line to be reduced to one. One genetic lineage shared by all non-African people everywhere throughout history. It's this single line that convinces Stephen Oppenheimer he is right about our ancestry. The implications of the single exodus from Africa are enormous. For a start, there's a simple observation that Australians, New Guineans, Southeast Asians, Chinese, Native Americans, Europeans and Indians all come from the same small group. that this small group in the last 80,000 years has diversified enormously into completely physically different populations in different parts of the world that have adapted physically and culturally to the new environments that they've found and they've explored. Gulf, Eve and our out-of-Africa families stayed put, waiting until the climate changes allowed them to move. Their descendants would be the people of the Middle East, spreading north into Europe 40,000 years later and founding the vibrant cosmopolitan cities we know today. Others would continue past the Gulf, moving east, beachcombing their way along the coast of the Indian Ocean, looking for warmer, gentle places to stop. Within 6,000 years of reaching the Yemen beaches, our ancestors would eat their way to Malaysia. The Great Toba Explosion, the most destructive event in the last two million years, provides positive clues about our family's journey. These are the Samang people, shy hunter-gatherers of the interior jungles in the Lake Peninsula. Much darker than the other Malaysian people who surround them, they are part of the Orang Asli group. Stephen Oppenheimer thinks they could be the surviving remnant of our out-of-Africa family that came through here 74,000 years ago. If our ancestors had passed this way, on their route from Africa to Australia and New Guinea, it's likely they would have left a genetic trace. And we know from previous surveys that the Orang Asli, as a group of tribes in the Malay Peninsula of Malaysia, are among the oldest people in this region. And the Samang are probably the oldest of all. Stephen Oppenheimer has come to this remote Samang village to collect swab samples of DNA. 
These, he hopes, will confirm his idea. Nama Farida. If my theory is correct, that they left Africa 80,000 years ago, they would have had to have traveled 6,000 miles to get here in 6,000 years in order to be here at the time of the Great Toba explosion. That means about a mile a year, which is entirely feasible for that sort of uh, nomadic lifestyle of uh, moving down the coast. But to determine whether or not they belong to that first out of Africa group, we need to look at their genetic lines and in particular their mitochondrial DNA, those will tell us whether or not they come straight out of the two daughters of Eve that originated just outside Africa. If they have their own unique lines, that suggests they've been isolated since that time, 70 or 80,000 years ago, and that they have developed completely on their own. If, on the other hand, we might even find that their lines are ancestral to people further down the line, like the Australians or the New Guineans. Again, our genetic tracing will help us to see whether or not that's the case. The genetic survey may prove the Samang are an ancient race, but it can't tell us exactly when they were here. We have to look for other evidence to validate the theory. These crude tools were found in a wooded valley called Kota Tampan near Penang. There are other sites nearby with the same sort of tools. What makes these so particularly interesting is they are embedded in a fall of Toba ash dated 74,000 years ago. Professor Zoraina Majid was looking for an ancient river terrace when she stumbled upon the Kota Tampan site. What Professor Majid had actually found was a stone tool workshop which could be pinpointed to 74,000 years ago. Majid is convinced that they were left by modern man. Kota Tampan also revealed man who had a complex mind. His stone tool technology revealed a rational, systematic and organized mind, the mind of Homo sapiens. These Kota Tampan tools are crucial for the dating of modern man's presence in Southeast Asia. They're the first tangible evidence we have of the whole journey from Africa to Australia. Combined with Stephen Oppenheimer's genetic tests, they could be real proof of our ancient migration. Has he found the evidence he needs? For the first time, archaeology and genetics gives us the same answer at this crucial point in our journey. Now we can be sure that our ancestors came this way 74,000 years ago. The results are very exciting. The Orang Asli, the Samung group here, have their own unique genetic lines, which suggest that they may have been in that first beachcombing trip 75,000 years ago. They have their own unique lines coming out of the first two daughters of Eve outside Africa. And they trace right back there and are not shared with anyone else in Southeast Asia or in East Asia. At that time, the sea levels were 160 feet lower. Most of the islands of Southeast Asia were joined together into the single landmass of the Sunda continent. The survivors of Toba's volcanic winter would take our genetic journey onto its next great move, the unknown continent of Australia. <laughs>